Well, hello here. We are at the Ballater Gallery on tour again uh, into another one of our Meet the Artist series. And this one is just a little bit different. So keep watching because this is exciting. This is sort of hot news, if you like, because I'm not only announcing the latest in our series of Meet the Artist, but I'm actually going to tell you about our latest signing. And it's none other than David Schofield. Hello, David. Hello, Dan. So... <laughs> So I, I don't know, there's something very two Ronnies about me there and David is. sitting here. Yeah. Do you think that, do you? Over to you. Right, over to you. <laughs> very quick. So, uh, there's. Uh, it's great to be here in the middle of Edinburgh. Um, I'm going to let David tell a little bit about his own story from school days in a second. But David uh, I, Schofield has been uh, one of the most renowned artists in Scotland for a long time. Is there some uh, surrealism in his work? He can tell you about that word. Is it right or isn't it? I've wanted to own a David Schofield painting for a long time, and I haven't actually bought one. Now, David will also tell you a little bit about it. For many years, he's been exhibiting, not only with some of London and Edinburgh's very top galleries, but also in a wee gallery in Aberdeen, which has been around for over 50 years, but recently closed when Dwayne, the owner, retired. And David has been one of the stalwarts and stars of the Rendezvous in Gallery in Aberdeen and um, only recently because of the Rendezvous closing has David felt it appropriate to allow himself to be shown with the Ballad Gallery. So at last, tell us a bit about yourself David. Uh, well I grew up in Nairn, which is by Inverness, and I've always made art, I think from ever I can remember. I've always made things. Uh, I always liked doing sculpture. I remember one of the best presents I ever had as a kid was this box of Meccano. And I would make lots of different things with Meccano, and then I'd draw them. Um, and I always painted birds as well. I mean, I spent a lot of time running around in the fields, as we did when we were in Nairn, because it's very rural. Um, I was lucky in school uh, to have a brilliant, probably the best teacher I've ever had, a lady by the name of Mrs. Neal, Sheena Neal, who sadly is no longer with us, um, who was my teacher all the way through school in art. In, and she was fantastic. She was, um, she was a potter. She trained in Glasgow School of Art. And um, she encouraged me to go to art college, something I always wanted to do. Um, and I ended up applying to Dundee, although my first choice was Glasgow, because all my teachers were from Glasgow. Fortunately, I didn't get into Glasgow, but within a week of being in Dundee, we realized it was the best place to be. We were kind of a ragtag group of people that didn't get into other art colleges. And uh, as, a, as a student, it was a fantastic place to be. It still is in Dundee. And Duncan of Jordanston, I ended up uh, studying illustration. So this was early 90s? Early 90s. Started in 89, finished in 93. Uh, illustration was a subject I loved, I, I was really interested in. I mean, when I, was, when I was young, I was always quite obsessed with myths and legends. And I really loved the illustrations that went with them. They, they really brought all the stories alive. Um, and it was something I always fancied doing. Um, and when I was at college, I was very much obsessed with new American illustration, particularly a man by the name of Jordan Isip who was a New Yorker, and his work was quite stunning. And uh, by fourth year, I was more than happy to leave Dundee and, and uh, find my way in illustration. Went down to London for a couple of months, uh, had many, many interviews with big, big clients, big magazines. And I ended up starting getting work uh, in newspapers, did a lot of editorial work and up here at Scots, uh, the Scotsman newspaper and various other newspapers and magazines down in London. Um, and it was fantastic. I always liked uh, illustration work. I liked editorial work um, because you, you, you did a different subject every week. It was a fantastic challenge for your brain. It really got you into working very fast because at college you can be quite self-indulgent. You might have two weeks to do a piece of work. When I was working for the Scotsman, we had at times sometimes 24 hours. And also, the, one of the great joys uh, in being in Edinburgh at the time, and a lot of illustrators, if anybody watches this, who was in Edinburgh at the time doing illustration, we had full access to the Scotsman building any hour of the day. So we used to sneak in in the middle of the night and we would photocopy our uh, portfolios for the, uh, the Scotsman's expense, which was fantastic. So there was a memo going around saying we can't do that. But the building itself was wonderful. It was a great time to be an illustrator. The, the newspapers were using a lot of illustration at the time. Gradually, due to money restraints, they ended up using a lot more found, uh, found images and image banks. And gradually, unfortunately, a lot of illustration work didn't really happen very much anymore. 
And can you be both? Can you be an illustrator and a, an artist? Well, the thing is, I mean, for a couple of years, I, I, I did illustration. I went back to teach in Dundee for, for a couple of years, uh, back at the art college, and that was fun, teaching illustration and uh, life drawing. And my work was noticed, because I was living in Edinburgh, by Thomas Wilson, who owned the Open Eye Gallery. And the Open Eye Gallery, as you know, is a very well-respected gallery. At the time in Edinburgh, there was only really the Scottish Gallery and, and the Open Eye Gallery. Those were the two big ones with an international reputation. And Tom said, well, I'll take a couple of pieces of yours. Now, to me, that was quite alien. I didn't really have a clue about the, that, that kind of side of fine art. Um, and he took the pieces and he sold them. And then within, I think it must have been about six weeks, I got a phone call in the old 369 gallery where I used to work from Tom saying, I'll give you a solo show, the open eye. And I was absolutely petrified. An incredible honour, though. It massively so. But, but as I wasn't from that background, it wasn't quite a, a huge thing to me as everybody else was saying. Sort of like, wow, you're in the open eye. And I was like, well, great. You know, I'll just I'll have a bash at this show, show then. But I found myself to be quite lost in a way because up to that point in my career, I'd been always working to other people's brief uh, and working with other people to come up with an idea. Now, suddenly I had to come up with uh, 30 pieces of my own. So that was, a, that was an interesting sort of baptism of fire in this great gallery, which at the time was in Cunningham Street. Uh, so I had the show and it was a success. And um, ever since then, I've been asked back and they've represented me in Edinburgh. And I think I probably had about seven solo shows with the Open Eye. And, por and Portal as well. The Portal as well. Yeah, yeah the Portal is a gallery, a quite famous gallery in London, uh, who show John Byrne and uh, various, some very, very good artists. And they, they're, 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 they're a gallery that's always prided itself on the imagination of their artists. Um, and that's something I think my work has always been described as very imaginative. And they've been a fantastic gallery to work with. They are showing, funnily enough, very soon at, at the British Art Fair with my work. And it's, it's, it's been great. And various other galleries in London and throughout, throughout Britain. So, and I know, you know, I've, I've read, you've got many celebrity international film stars who collect your work. And, all of this, but your your work, as I've researched it, David, and as as I've as, a, as an avid collector, I've looked at it. It evolves, it changes. Which let's actually talk about one of yes. your paintings. Yeah. So here we have it's um, evening night at Galnach, isn't Galnach, it? Yeah. Uh, on Muck, Muck or Muck. Yes, the Isle yes, of Muck, which is the smallest island in the in the Hebrides off the west coast of Scotland. It's a place that was introduced to me a couple of years ago by my, my partner, who, uh, who's been there for many many years. It's an absolutely beautiful island. It's very small. You can't take your, your own car on there. You have to, we, we usually stay for a week. You have to bring your own, all your own food. And it's, it's, a, it's an island of contrast. You have beautiful beaches. You have a couple of sort of relatively small hills, but there's golden eagles flying around. There's wild horses running around on the beach. There's uh, various big bullocks running around. And it's just a very restful, peaceful place. And I was blown away by it. Now, when I was at... When I was at college, I would actually, throughout the summer, I would make money throughout the summer selling landscapes, which were very traditional, very realist landscapes. And it's something I've never really got back, you know, never really sort of tackled. So it's kind of all just a little bit of history yeah. repeating. Explain a little bit about this painting, well, this could you? Yeah, this particular piece is, um, it's, it's actually, the, the main focus of this piece is this boat. Now, this boat is called the Wave, and I've got it in a lot of the work at the moment. And it's it's a boat that is now, um, it's been decommissioned, it's been pulled up onto the Macca. It's... It's kind of falling to bits a little bit, but it's about 40 or even 45 years old. And it was a boat that transported uh, cattle and people from the island to the mainland. And it, it, was, it was quite a symbolic uh, a boat at the time. I felt it was the island which is owned by the McEwen family. And uh, the, 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 the older member of the McEwen family, Lawrence, actually died a couple of months ago. And there was a poignancy to the boat itself. It was very much a historical part of the island to me. And it was quite interesting how I saw that boat, as opposed to how the people on the island saw the boat. It was very much a boat that could be sort of taken down to bits and maybe part of it used again. I saw it in quite a romantic way. And it was it was sort of stark and isolated and, and quite stunning. And it made me, the first time I went to the island, I didn't really go to the island thinking about artwork. But when I left, I almost said to myself, I wish I'd taken a thousand pictures because it really inspired me. And I started as soon as I came back, started to do sketches and some smaller pieces about the island. And, um, you know, confidence, it's something I hadn't done for a while, but I found that the boat itself was something that, because I could paint it um, in some of the other ones, it was quite realist. It was very sharp areas of the boat, but there was also areas of the boat 
that are just pure line. It was almost like it was becoming part of the landscape itself. It was falling into the landscape. It's, it's totally, utterly gorgeous. And the colors and the light, yeah. which, you, you know, you generally medium that you're painting. And does that vary as well? No, always oils. Always. Always oils. Mm -hmm. um, I like the I like the richness of oils. And I like the fact oils are very forgiving. I, I used to try and uh, with acrylics at college, but they dried so quickly. I know you can get mediums to make them dry less, but there was something about the way you could move paint around the next day. Um, if it hadn't completely dried, you could, you know, you could mix it. it. It's quite a forgiving. So your beautiful paintings of the the birds. Yeah. Well. I was I was about to say where's the birds, but that was yeah, that'd be another two Ronnie sort of sketch, birds, wasn't yes. it? Um, so they're beautiful and they're so different. And you know, I'm hoping that we yeah. might get a couple of them yeah, in Balator absolutely. as well. Yeah. Just also, David, we're going to be talking about really totally different from uh, the painting of Muck, but I would also like to talk about. Is it Signalman's Garden? Yes, the Signalman's Garden. Which Tom will hopefully drop in now. Tell us a little bit about that painting. Well, the it, it's Garden's gorgeous. Got, it's quite a gorgeous. It's, quite, it's got a, a personal piece. It's um, in, in the centre of it is a signal, a signal house, a signal box, which is actually bought for me by my partner last Christmas. And it's an antique. It's a Hornby one from about the 1950s. And it's sitting in the middle of the maze. And Kenris, my partner, is a wonderful, wonderful human being who loves flowers and nature and wilding, rewilding. And it's about her. And the, 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 there's, there's trains in it that are, that are stopped or, or are they moving? They're sitting in a garden. It's, it's about life, really. It's about relationships. It's about, you know, finding, finding love, finding people to love and, and even, even an idea of constantly searching for that. And hopefully you will find that. Um, it's a piece that at the moment is not finished. It's a piece that I'm still working out really, which can be quite exciting as an artist because I think a lot of times a lot of artists will just reproduce the same piece all the time. I need a challenge. I think that's why I enjoyed illustration so much. I need to be able to start thinking. I like to think in my work. Um, and it's a piece that uh, it's going to be full of flowers and it's going to be full of love. I think. I think it's totally fascinating. You know, people say to me quite often, do you ever sleep at night? You know, because I'm always yeah, yeah. here or there and wherever, Edinburgh, Glasgow. London with paintings you know, for our buyers and you know your thoughts I, I just wonder you know when you go to bed are you thinking about these stories because they're almost never ending the well, they're story. never ending one of the things is like people sort of say you know where do you get your ideas from and they come from everywhere you can come from you can see something in the street or you can read something in the newspapers or things yourself how you feel about life and I find I walk to work every morning and it's a good hour walk and I find that at the start of the flat, I'll have something in my head. By the time I get to the studio, it'll completely change. It might have been completely dismissed because it doesn't work, or it'll actually grow as I walk. It's a great way of me working out things in my head. And it, I find that, funny enough, I actually finish more paintings than I used to. You know, when I first started out, after the open eye show, the first open eye show, a lot of the work would uh, would probably just sit in the corner of the studio. I did, I never finished it, and and now I'm better at probably working them, walking, working them out. Heavens. Do you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit inadequate. All these thoughts and all this talent. Um, but, you know, we're going to wind up here um, because this has been fantastic. I think it's going to really excite the regular followers of these um, Meet the Artists because your work is all arriving literally as we speak now. We're into October. And um, I can't wait for people to see the, the landscapes with a little bit of the twist, the paintings with surrealism, mm. the, um, the maze. And um, your beautiful studio that's tidy, is it? It's tidy just for you, David. I just... knew you were coming, and I thought, this man needs tidiness. Listen, this man does not have a tidy house, well, I'll tell you that. But this man is going to say, I think maybe just to round up this great video, great fun. I'm, before you say anything else, cheeky, a young David, maybe it's good night from me. And it's good night from him. Thank you. Thank you.